All right, back with a morning drive on this uh, Monday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, one of the hot topics of conversation on this show and really all around uh, South Georgia and uh, North Florida, and not only in Lowndes County, Doherty County, and Conquer County, Brooks County, has been the Sable Trail Transmission Pipeline and the uh, effort by that company to establish a pipeline here through Georgia. There's been opposition both from, uh, I think, uh, environmental groups as also just landowners and homeowners who have, uh, have been pretty vocal in their opposition to this as it moves forward. Uh, and as of, I think this was filed on Friday, yes. uh, yeah, John Quarterman's here with us by the way in the studio. John, good morning. How are you? I'm just fine. Well, good to see you again, Chris. You as well. John, of course, is with the uh, Walls Watershed Coalition Incorporated. You are the... Uh, it's actually Walls Watershed Coalition. I'm the president at the moment. There you go. And you have filed a petition with the State of Florida and the Department of Environmental Protection as well as the Stable Trail Transmission Pipeline. This was filed on Friday, is that right? That's right. The amended petition was filed on Friday. Now, tell us what this petition is all about, John. Well, this petition, the purpose is to stop this pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, this is in conjunction with opposition in a number of other places, like in Albany, Georgia, Sable Trail wants to build a compressor station, and they've applied to the Georgia Environmental Protection Division for a, an air quality permit. Now, that's going to have to go through another public hearing session, and it's going to have a, a, a public comment session, it's going to have a public hearing in Albany. Mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of other state permits that have to be left before this pipeline can be built. And what we're concentrating on Walls Watershed Coalition, we represent the Lapaha, Wipicucci, and Upper Samani Rivers. Okay, Seven Trail wants to cross the Samani River in Florida. We think that's a really bad idea because where they want to cross is right in the middle of the Springs area of North Florida. It's right in the middle of the most vulnerable area of the fragile karst limestone that contains the Floridan aquifer, which is what we all drink of that's right. right here in South Georgia as well. So, yes indeed, it's a property rights issue. We've had a bunch of landowners in Florida join Wall just so that they could have their name listed in this petition. Yeah. So, so where's, the, where's the process, John? Because I know they've had all the, uh, the, the open hearings, the public hearings, as they you know, well, we haven't. well, we've had a couple here, I know. We've had some in Moultrie, we've had some in Brooks County, where people have been able to go in. But the question has been, were they really listing? Was it a dog and pony show? And, you know, a lot of people, I think, are under the attitude that this thing was going to go through and nobody could do anything about it. And that's been like, problematic for a lot of people. Have you kind of heard that same concern? You're talking about the hearings that were held by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. FERC, that's right. FERC, yes. And, uh, well, yes, those were dog and pony shows. Do you know who funds FERC? It's a federal agency, so I'm assuming the taxpayers do. That's what I assume to have looked into it, but they brag about it on their webpage. They brag about it to Congress. They are 100% funded by the very same industries they supposedly, quote, regulate, unquote. That seems like it makes a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. Now, when I say that there were no public hearings, I mean the Florida Department of Environmental Protection has never held a public hearing on this subject. Okay. Now, it, it's, it's easy to, be, uh, to think that they would have uh, when one of our board members, Walls board members, Chris Maracle, spoke before the Hamilton County, Florida Commission. Several of them thought, well, surely there must have been hearings. There must have been hearings. No, no, there have not been. And that's what one thing that Walls is asking for, this petition asks for, a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Because we really need to address many of these issues. I mean, you know, starting with, let's go back to landowners, you know, the Florida DEP for short, they're claiming that, well, you have to be a directly affected landowner directly at where the pipeline would cross the Suwannee River. Well, I'm sorry, that's not so. The uh, Suwannee River Water Management District has demonstrated they could dive into a cavern uh, a dozen miles south of the Suwannee River and some of the dye came up on the other side, on the north side, on a, in a spring next to the Wifakuchi River, in a different county. So if uh, Sable Trail causes a sinkhole into that cavern system underneath the Samani River, there's no telling where their pollution might come up. Mm -hmm. Everyone is affected. Right. And again, this is very, uh, when we talk about people who use this area, I mean, the, there are a lot of tourists who go down who use that area for uh, swimming, fishing, the whole nine yards. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I think even more so than that, John, what we've heard is that they just simply don't like a private company telling homeowners what they can do with their property, uh, and that's here in Lowndes County, and I'm sure in Florida as well. But just speaking about folks here, 
Oh yeah, that's definitely true. Who likes a company from Houston coming in and saying, we have to go through your property, we got a survey right now, and hey, this is just a survey, it doesn't mean we're going to get eminent domain. Well, why on earth would you want to do the survey if you didn't want eminent domain? Uh, indeed, right here in Lowndes County, there's a bunch of landowners that have been protesting this from the beginning. And also right here in Lowndes County, also Friday, the same morning before we filed this petition, Walls went out to where Sable Trail wants to cross the Withlacoochee River from Brooks County to Lowndes County. And that's just as bad an idea. This is called by geologists the Valdosta Lime Sink area, mm -hmm. as in sinkholes and limestones, like that one that opened up next to Shiloh Road. That's right. Which was the very same day that Sable Trail was quoted in the Valdosta Daily Times as saying, "We've done studies; it's safe." <laughs> well, so when you okay, so you filed a petition earlier. They said, "Well, we deny your petition. You've got to amend it. You've now done that. So now that you filed a petition, where does it go from here?" Right. They said that we uh, we were not a Florida corporation. Okay. Well, now we have a tightly controlled Florida subsidiary. They said that we had demonstrated that our members use the Suwannee River. Well, we included a picture of our members at the site where it's going to cross. And these were members from I mean, several from Lowndes County, from Madison County, Florida, Hamilton County, Florida, and as far away as Coffee County, Florida. Well, as far away, some of the participants came from South Africa. People, you know, is there anybody in the world who's not heard of the Suwannee River? Is there anybody that wants it polluted or destroyed? No. Yeah. So the next step in this process from a, from a legal standpoint, I guess, is uh, you filed a petition, so where does it go from here? Well, right now we're waiting for them to respond. If they uh, follow the letter of their own rules, they ought to grant a hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, they could decide to bounce it back and say, you still didn't do everything we asked. I don't know what else exactly they would ask, but they could do that, or they could reject it. You know, okay. any, of the, any of those is possible. And this would be heard by who? Is this the Department of Environmental Protection? That's who makes the decision on this? Well, now that's an interesting question. The trustees of this Department of Environmental Protection are the governor and his cabinet, the governor of Florida and his cabinet, which is extremely interesting because the governor of Florida owns stock in Spectrum Energy, the very company that wants to put in this pipeline, before FPL got approval from the Florida Public Service Commission to uh, raise their rate to pay for this pipeline. And he still owns stock in at least half a dozen other pipeline companies, including Williams Company, which owns Transco, the very pipeline across Alabama, Sable Trail wants to get its gas from. Has he, has Rick Scott publicly commented about the whole Sable Trail that you know of? Not that I've heard of. He seems strangely silent. <laughs> well, so we'll see. Is there any kind of time frame on this as far as now that the petition has been filed when they have to render a decision on this? Uh, it's not clear. It didn't say, and yeah, yeah. it said in the petition there's a deadline for when you have to file, right. uh, but there's, I didn't see any deadline for when they have to respond. Um, the uh, you approach this, I guess, I'm guessing. Tell me if I'm wrong. From an environmentalist standpoint, you do not have land that the pipeline is scheduled to go through, correct? Uh, I do not. But as I mentioned, a number of landowners so in could, Florida right. have do have such land, and there's a list of them here in the petition. Several of them are directly on the path of the pipeline. One of them is owns the land in Sewanee County where the pipeline would come back up from under the Sewanee River. Right. And he's filed multiple uh, notices to FERC saying that Sable Trail did not tell FERC about several of the, uh, the uh, springs and sinkholes that are on his property and nearby where that pipeline would go. So yes, we have very directly affected landowners and lots of other people. And, and the reason I ask that is because I think there, there are two kind of, two groups with some overlap, those who are landowners and who don't like the fact that this is going to their land without their say so, but also folks who just oppose it from an environmentalist standpoint who say this is number one not needed. It, there's another route that I've been told and again Tell me if I'm wrong, but there's another route that could have been taken, uh, but much more expensive route, I'm guessing, underwater. Is that is that correct? Well, they could have gone through the Gulf. There is right. a, a pipeline that runs through the Gulf, Gulf Stream, which is incidentally owned by Williams Company and Spectrum Energy. Uh, FPL said they wanted a geographically independent route. I've got a geographically independent route. Let's cancel this pipeline, and the Sunshine State should go straight to solar power. I mean, if Georgia can be, as it now is, 
the fastest growing market for solar power in the country if Georgia, as it did this year, can pass a law making it a lot easier to finance solar power, Florida can do the same thing. In fact, there is a bill for a very similar law before the Florida legislature right now. So we'll see where that goes. And we have seen more and more solar companies who have uh, been in business now putting different solar projects in different parts of Georgia, a lot of them here in South Georgia. And uh, I think the question on that has been, uh, is that sustainable? How much solar energy can be produced? Oh, well, enough solar energy and wind power uh, augmented by a tiny little bit of hydropower can power the state of Georgia, it can power the state of Florida, it can power every state in the country. There's a study by Mark Z. Jacobson, a professor out of Stanford, mm -hmm. which has been published in a peer-reviewed journal that demonstrates this. Okay. So if, uh, let me ask you, if folks want to get behind your effort, again, the Walls Watershed Coalition Incorporated. Walls Watershed Coalition. Is that what I said, Walls? No, I said Walls. Walls Watershed Coalition Incorporated. Uh, if folks want to join that, is there a website? What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I'm sure you said Walls, as in www.alls.net. That's for Withacoochee, Willacoochee, Alapaha, Little and Upper Samani. Yeah. Rivers, www.alls.net. So you can join right there online. And a growing number of people have had because more and more people, I think, are are getting behind this. As you said, I'm sure you've already had a lot of people join just because of this petition. And that's both in, uh, and again, you don't really, or you tell me if this is right or not, you don't have to be in an affected county to join. I mean, you've got no, people you know, all over. We have members from Atlanta to South Florida. In fact, we even got one from New York State. You can be anywhere and join. Right. Uh, most of the members are actually in the watershed area, but sure. that's not a requirement. Right, exactly. And again, if folks want to see that route that has been proposed that you guys are talking about, is it also on the website? Or is oh, yeah. It, yeah, it's on the website. There you go. So you can check it out there. Again, I know, and I may be missing some counties, John, but I know in Georgia, we've heard Doherty County, as you mentioned, they've been very vocal about this uh, because of the, uh, the Transfer station is up. Uh, uh, it's a compressor station. Compressor station. Which, yeah, it, it, transfer station is probably a good term for it. But yeah, it's like it would be like a four-story building. It'd be very loud. Now, you know, Saber Trail says it's be like a quiet dishwasher. Yeah, right. Tell that to the people in Searsmont, Maine, where it blew out like an air raid siren, <laughs> and they said it was the scariest thing they'd ever heard. And I could cite some other examples. And you know, Saber Trail says a lot of things that if you go and look, like they say, we're a safe company. So how does that explain that the National Energy Board of Canada got tired of citing them for individual problems and put out a blanket order on July 14th, fix your systematic problems or we'll start shutting down your operations in British Columbia? Wow. And not only opposition from places like Canada, other pipeline companies. Yes, such as Southern Natural Gas, which is the owner of the pipeline that goes through South Georgia now. I'm very familiar with it. It's on my property. And Southern Natural Gas has complained repeatedly to FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, that Sable Trail proposes to cross the existing pipeline far too many times. And they've you know, got the data on that. It's far more than any other pipeline has ever proposed. And SONAT says that Sable Trail wants to do it by unsafe drilling method methods. I mean, is this, the, you know, is a company that wants to do that, Spectra Energy, half owner of Sable Trail, is that who we want drilling through our land? A lot of questions to be answered, certainly. And again, if you want more information, it's www.als.net. Yes. There you go. Check out the website. Again, the petition has been filed. We'll wait and see what the state of Florida and the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, how they respond to it and, and when they respond to it. And I'm sure, John, you'll let me know so we can talk about it. Sure will. Let you know as soon as we hear anything. John, good to see you. Thanks for coming by this morning. Good to see you. Thanks. Absolutely. Again, www.als.net if you want more information about this project and their efforts. Uh, you can find it there. We'll take a quick break. We'll come right back. Our strange stories of the day is coming up next. That's more of the morning drive on News Talk 105.9. This is WVGA.